I'm sorry. You know how it works. The world is no longer mysterious. What a joke. It had been three months since I inherited the old tavern. Max's coattail tucked between his legs and he left me with ever climbing depth. I was about to let the pride of my family go into ruins. Even if my ex had abandoned me, I was still determined to keep the business afloat. He always said the bar would be good for something. Just wish he didn't give it up. The few faces I recognized from the bar. My regulars Ronnie, Elle, and Lori. Those three really got me through the toughest times. What would my regulars do if they didn't have the bar? What would I have done? Here in a small mountain town, or a community, when someone's in need, we all came together. No person left behind. It was honestly refreshing, given the current climate. The town I lived in thrived off of the tavern. During the Animal Spring Fest, our town was hit with an unforeseen recession. Loads of mom and pop shops unfortunately didn't survive the season. Small mountain town has great views, and a fragile economy. Who knew? But thanks to the hard work from my regulars, they made sure I never went under. Seriously, I need to throw a get-together sometime. It really saved my butt back there. Whenever we had that storm last winter, Elle really came through with the propane tanks. Gloria brought her secret stash of bourbon, the good stuff. Arani made the best non-cooked meal imaginable. I really could consider these people to be my found family. I had taken the afternoon off to climb my local mountain, albeit against my wishes. I couldn't argue whenever it came to the three of them, so I swallowed my pride and ascended a rocky terrain. A small crow perched on the swaying trees ahead. Hey, buddy. Wouldn't happen to know where I could find some thyme, would you? The crow simply stared, beady eyes reflecting into mine. Right. The crow ascended to the sky, gracefully taking flight. Okay, little guy. If I could fly, it would save me so much time. I turned my attention to the sound of crunching leaves and see a man. Is he smoking in the woods? Does he realize how dangerous that is? Has he never heard of smoke? Who is Smokey? <coughs> the man notices me staring, and with a quick press to the tree, he extinguishes his cigarette. What the? Before I had a chance to process the tension creeping across my shoulders, the man bounded towards me, ruining my internal focus. His pace would calm, but something about his urgency frightened me. You're a long way from civilization, aren't you? I freeze. I strained my brain trying to remember any hiking site or marker. I had gone off path. Just where in the goddamn frick did this dude even come from? What brings you to my neck of the woods? I forced myself to swallow, when he had the lump in my throat, bobbed. I played with the hem of my sweat-soaked top in a sheepish attempt to find the right words. Uh, I stammered. I didn't realize this land belonged to anyone specific. I didn't intend to trespass. A deep chuckle erupts from the man's chest. You do understand that people live in the mountains, right? He gestures to the horizon. Dozens of houses line the edges of these woods. Mine just happened to be the furthest away from the tree lines. Good for privacy, and great for keeping wandering people out. I trade my gaze to the sediments and around our feet, a wave of anxiety slapping into my chest. Look, I was just looking for some herbs, but I got a little sidetracked and ultimately got lost in the process. Hey, calm down. Don't work yourself into a frenzy there. You're okay. You can relax. I'm not gonna hurt you. I take a deep breath. Okay. I exhale slowly. Better? Much. Thank you. He smiles down at me, and only now did I really notice how tall he was. I had to crane my neck to look up at him. Just what did they feed this man? How has he built this big? He notices my staring, a sly smile creep across his features. Can I got your tongue there, squirt? There's no need to be shy. I won't bite. I simply blinked. Was he... No way. Well, this is awkward. I scan around looking for a hole to crawl into so I can die in peace. I come up to the mountains for herbs or an unwanted break from work. Now if a strong man flirting with me? Where do you even... There's no way he would be. I mean, come on. Think of the circumstances, lion. He's just being friendly. Ugh. This is why I stay indoors. You would think working at a bar would strengthen my social skills. If I had stayed home, I would have had the herbs I needed, one click away. I could man the counter, design new drinks. Anything really would be better than this. Something felt off about this dude. 
But even so, I'd come this far, so I felt less inclined to turn back now. <coughs> if you don't mind, I would love to further my time my time conquest with uh your permission, of course. With my permission? My cheeks flush a little. Was this guy really criticizing my explorer etiquette? It's a dude! I wasn't about to give him the satisfaction. I can leave if you'd like me to. But just so you know, saving money will always be preferable over spending away my hard-earned dime. Those greedy fresh market dudes won't get a further cent out of me. He pauses. A solemn moment of silence fills the air. <laughs> what? Ah, Squirt. You're killing me. He wipes a few straight tears from the corners of his eyes. Does this dude get off on mocking me? I'm with you on the deconstruction of our capitalistic country, but don't you think you're a bit out of your element here? Yeah, I beg your pardon? You're asking a crow for directions. You heard that? He continues to laugh at me at my suffering. That... Oh! He finishes his mockery, softly chuckling. But Thyme? Why Thyme specifically? Does it matter? No, but you aren't exactly in a position to withhold secrets. How do you figure? Crow. Now make your mocktails. Cocktails? With Thyme? Ah, just forget it. You're just gonna make fun of me. Me? Oh, never. He snickers to himself again. This sight slightly irritates me. Do you know where it is or not? I can't be here much longer. He frowns. A soft groan emits from his chest. After what felt like ages, he speaks. I could show you, but you'll have to follow me. Is he serious? Did he think that I would just trust him after all this? He had teased me enough. There was no way I was willingly signing up for this harassment. I don't feel comfortable going to a second location with you. He stares, a bit perplexed. I know how to tell you this, Squirt, but we are deep within the forest. A little late for that, don't you think? He's got me there. Listen, I... I don't have time for this. I'll just be on my way. He blocks my path with his body. Without your time, it'd be a real shame if you're unable to complete your cocktails. Personally, I don't think the sound of herbs in my drink sounds appealing. You say that, but don't knock it to you try it. Pairs well with drinks like vodka and bourbon. Bourbon, huh? He pauses. Well, when you put it like that, it's funny hard to resist the idea of tasting it. He looks at me, hungrily, a shiver from the intensity. How about you come with me? You find your time and try something new. What do you say? Just what is with this man? He shows up out of nowhere, belittles me, soothes me, and gets in my space. He was truly dropping some major red flags. And for that, I nod it. Wait, you decided. Accept his help, refuse. What happens if I refuse? I'm just gonna refuse the first time around. Something didn't feel right about this guy. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but something was tugging in the corners of my mind. Leaf. What? I asked if you want to find the herb together. Your ears backed up? His grin now sent shivers down my spine. Yeah, I imagine that voice. Whatever the case, I need to go. Ah, sorry, I don't think so. Thank you, though. It was a kind offer. I shoot him a gentle smile, gathering my things to head down the mountain. Alright then, if you change your mind, I'll be here. His tone was sharp. Right, thanks. I book it off to the mountains, slipping over rocks in the process. Yeah! Damn it. I felt square on my butt. So humiliating. The faster I was off this mountain, the better. I need to prep for tomorrow. After scrambling down the mountain, I made it to the comfort of my apartment. It had been a weird day. I would definitely feel it in my bones tomorrow. What a weirdo. Who smokes in the woods? That's some serial killer stuff. I used to smoke in the woods. What, what, what? Does that make me a serial killer? Don't answer that. But what if I had misjudged him? What if he was just a guy passing through? Man, I kind of feel bad now. Maybe the guy actually had an idea where wild thymes were growing. Who? Oh! Wonder why he's calling at this hour. Hope Lori didn't drink another tourist under. Last time that happened, our town nearly banned alcohol. Hello? Ader champ? How's the nature walk? Yeah, you know. I couldn't tell him that I met a suspicious dude on my hike. Didn't want to worry him. He sounds like he's sitting at a construction zone. Just what in the world could he be doing? Just where are you? 
I'm helping some buddies move some sheet metal for tomorrow's fall festive. And a familiar voice cuts in from the background. Is that Lion? Yeah, Lion. Lori's here too. Yeah, tell him I said hi. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Hello! Hello, Lion! Did you have a good time today in the mountains? Uh didn't want to lie, but I could hear I could I couldn't bear the thought of worrying Lori either. These two were like my parents than my own. Yeah, it was fine. I thought it not form my stomach from my lie. Yeah, we're able to find the time. Al was just talking about you, you hosting a book club at the bar tomorrow night in celebration of your newest concoction. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to. I'll order some in the morning, but Al will have to host book club another day. I'm so sorry. Kid, you don't have to apologize. It's alright. You did nothing wrong. I'm sorry you couldn't find any. I knew you had your heart set on finding some. Lori cuts in. If it's any consolation, I recently obtained purple corn oaxacan whiskey. I would be more than happy to provide the drinks for the evening. And I can make a mean club sandwich. I'd be happy to make it up for everyone. You guys, they were truly the best people in my life right now. Ah, uh, shoot. Mike's knocked a grade over. You gotta have to go, kid. This is quite a blunder. Ah, oh, darn. Hope he's alright. Lori's tending to him right now. You good? Uh, okay, good. Listen, I still gotta go. But we're still off for tomorrow, right? See you soon. Yeah, stay safe. Yeah. Am I the butthole for lying to the people who care about me for the sake of sparing their lives? I sink into my bed, feeling the day's wear take its toll. I place my phone onto my nightstand, sprawling over my mattress like a beach starfish. I hope I can sleep alright. Tomorrow's gonna be a long day. I'll have to give Al a custom drink to make up for the lack of time. Hope he won't be mad. I lazily reach for my lamp. I look at my cloud plush. Night, buddy. I rolled over, pulling my plush comforter over my shoulders. The soft sounds of my breathing lulled me into a peaceful sleep. Thank you for playing my little game. Ah, neat. You know what? We can't just leave out a happy ending. I'm going to accept this help. I want to die. <laughs> That's the spirit. He motions for me to follow him, his tall figure slinking amongst the tree line. We walked in silence, taking the occasional glance to one another. All the while, he smiled softly. It was unsettling. I felt the lump forming in my throat as soft leaves crunched under my feet. You sure are talkative. He was obviously proud of his remark. What a poop-eating grin. I want to slap it off his scruffy face. In fact, that's not the only thing I want to slap off his face. I mean, heck, I would love to give it some tight, tight spanks. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't going to feed into his ego, so I kept walking, ignoring his comment. Don't tell me you're going to go quiet on me now. Not when you were so talkative earlier. He laughs again. Just that situation is a little precarious, you know? His eyes find mine as we walk. My blood grows cold. How so? Well, don't they usually say not to trust strangers and not to follow them deep into the woods? Yeah, it's like everything we're doing now. I have betrayed every safety spokesperson that had given speeches at my schools. Sorry, I couldn't keep my promise, Carl Bonabi, the safety bear. I feel so ashamed. He snorts in response. You insinuating something there, Squirt. Not to mention the outdated rhetoric you just spewed at me. What is this? The 90s? They'll have you know that safety is very important. It's never a bad idea to remind someone of the golden rules of safety. It can save your life. A short puff of air slips from his nostrils. He was still laughing at me. That jerk. What if I were like, serial killer? And you just invited me to hang out with you. I buffed out my chest in response. He went quiet. Well? Well what? Are you one? A serial killer? Nah, I'm a serial heartbreaker. That's what I am. Oh, uh, I was clearly joking out of spite. So what kind of question is that? He clearly liked messing with me and I kept falling for his traps. You know what? I don't have to put up with this anymore. I knew this good for nothing burly sack of poo was gonna test me, but for the sake of frugality, I tried. And I've had enough. Just who does this overblown, built like a brick house bozo think he is? We're here. Before I could chew him out, the sight of a small cabin distracts me. Wait, what? I thought we were gonna get herbs. Why isn't he saying anything? Why 
What is he thinking, giving me the silent treatment in a time like this? Hey, don't you go quiet on me now. Answer me, damn it! Picked up some plywood from the ground. You know what? I think I'll go order my time online after all, so nice meeting you. Ciao. I slowly backed away. My back hit a tree. Dude, what the? What a pain. Thwack! Just then, just, just, just how tight it'll be over soon. Oh, just hang tight. It'll be over soon. Yeah. Can. Uh, uh, groan. What the frick? I slowly sit up, unsure of where or what. A sharp pain fills my head. I instinctively go to touch my scalp. My hands are bound together, preventing me from touching my face. Frick, frick, frick! I writhe in my binds, causing thick rope to dig into my skin. Ah! I took a few deep breaths. Oh no. I'm okay. I'm okay. This is not okay! My breathing is sharp and ragged. My head spun for miles. Ah, okay. Why the frick? Why is this happening? I clenched my teeth so hard, I swear I felt one crack. So that was the least of my worries. There were bigger things at hand. Quickly, I scanned the room for my attacker. The room was empty. He was... gone? I tried to stand, but my legs were wobbly. I slammed back onto the floor. Yeah! Damn it all. Everything that's happening is so unfair. Losing my family. Being in an inescapable depth. To become the next victim to a maniac. It was all too much. The world is no longer mysterious. Damn it! Not now, anything but that, please! No! No, not the strangely poetic quotes! I softly sobbed, curling into what I could, making myself as small as possible. Not him. I softly weep for a while, completing the shovel from my newfound predicament. After a while, I sit back up, looking at my surroundings. It had to have been hours, so just where was my captor? Did he vanish? Did he abandon me? The thought dug pits into my mind. I had to hold on to the thinly spread hope. If he wasn't there, then this could be my only chance for escape. After a short while of sporadic breathing, I felt my heart beat slow. There was still no sign of my captor. I didn't even try to stay calm. There was no telling what this man was capable of. I managed to loosen my bias after what felt like ages of writhing, the scratchy rope plopping to the ground below me. Okay. Okay. I took my hands to my face, scratching every spot that demanded attention. It's the little things. Frick. I gathered my things, turning for the door. I paused. There on the table sat a bottle of bourbon and a container of pills. It couldn't be this stupid. I hesitated, weighing my odds. Screw it. Cracky opened a bottle. I didn't hesitate to pour the white tablet into the caramel liquid. Taking a bottle with both hands, I swirled around the glistening liquid to ensure the pills mix evenly. It wasn't going to get away with this, and make sure he was dead before then. Placing the bottle back into the respective spots on the table, I went for the door. What are you doing? I can't move. I can't even turn to look at the direction his voice came from. I said, What are you doing? I didn't answer. I couldn't. Big hands find their way around my shoulders, forcing me to turn around. Squirt. I don't enjoy this little game of yours. If I were you, I would start talking. Now. My lips slightly quiver in response. Ah, very cute. I flinch as he brushes a fallen strand of his hair over my forehead. He chuckles in response. This won't be endearing for much longer, so you best speak up. I nod. What do you want from me? He shakes his head, tutting in response. Now, now, that isn't what I asked you. If I recall, I asked what you were doing. Now, be good for me. And share all those thoughts in that pretty little head of yours. He lightly taps my forehead. I was... Yes? I was thirsty. His eyes bore holes through my skull. An uncomfortable silence passes over the room before he speaks. Where are you now? Why didn't you just say so? Even though he was smiling, something about his tone sent shivers down my spine. He slams a hand on my shoulder, giving me an all but gentle pat. I eye him as he saunters back towards the table, seemingly unbothered. Mm-hmm. Is he humming? He snags the bottle from the table, his heavy footsteps echoed loudly as he bounded back towards me. It's as if he kidnapped me. He was eerily happy. 
I attempted to swallow the mask in my throat. He extended a bottle to me. White grin, masking his flippant demeanor. Drink up. I blinked, unsure of how to respond. What's wrong? Aren't you thirsty? I tremble at the sight of the laced bourbon in front of me. He shakes his head again, his smile unbreaking. Now, Squirt, you wouldn't want to waste precious liquor, now would you? In the spirit of frugality, I think it's best for you to take one for a team, eh? Yeah? He pauses. That is what you believe in, isn't it? His eyes narrow. I'm just matching your principles here, darling. I won't ask again. He shoves the bourbon into my hands. Drink. My hands quiver as I held the glass bottle. A large hand finds the back of my head, gently cradling my skull. He presses a soft kiss to my temple. His scratchy beard pokes into my skin. His breath smells like cigarettes and bourbon. Now, you're gonna down this concoction of your own creation to the last drop. Once you're finished, we can have a proper conversation. He ruffles my hair. So why don't you relax and take it like a champ? Uh, fight, plead, seduce? Seduce? Sure! I grab the neck of the bottle of one hand, slinking my free hand over his chest. You know, I can do something much more enjoyable for you. We can still have the talk, of course, in the bedroom. Now that I have a chance to finally look at you, I slide my finger over his collarbone. You're quite handsome. I bent my eyes a little to sell my pitch. Felt a little gross having to resort to flirting with my captor, but desperate times require desperate measures. He awkwardly clears his throat, shifting one oversized foot to the other. <laughs> Nearly had me there for a moment, Squirt. Nice try. What? Nearly! I cringed. So, what? I failed at seducing a maniac? I would argue that was quite alluring. Stupid mountain man, stupid mountain standards. What? No, stop! The point of this is to escape. Why do I always find myself in such uncomfortable situations? Don't call me out like that! This is why I stay home. God help me. Yeah, pathetic. Excuse me. An absolute butthole. Circumstances be damned. It deserved to be chewed out. You're an oversized butt wipe Bigfoot reject who's the bottom of the cigarette mom. Get bent, you thick headed goon. He pushes my hand off of his chest. I don't think you understand your predicament here, Squirt. He slips a medium knife from his cargo pants, plunging into the wall beside my skull. Now, tell me again what you think I am. Please, speak up so I can understand you. Because I think I misheard what you said. The knife nicked the skin on my throat. Crimson liquid trickled down to my collarbone. Huh, <laughs> you look good in red. Ah! He stabbed me, deep in the stomach. He crumbles so easily. He mercilessly plucks the blade from my abdomen, bringing the edge of the knife to my face. Che, you wanna fight the bull? Better get good at grabbing the horns. You're an impulsive one, aren't you? He taps the knife to my forehead as thick blood oozes from my flesh wound. I slip to the ground, unable to keep my bearings any longer. Oh well. It was fun. We'll give you that. He delivers another blow to my withering frame. He squats down to meet my eyes. You're the worst kind of person. Cold. Numb. I'm sorry. You died. All because I just wanted to rizz up the mountain, man. God damn it. Okay, what happens if I fight? No. No. I clench my fist against the glass. I said no! Glass shatters scatter across the ground. Caramel liquid sloshes over the oak stained floor. I would rather die to do a single thing you say. I glare him down, his eyes piercing back. A large hand slams to my collarbone, pinning my back to the wall behind me. Yes. Show me that anger. Feed into those primitive desires and fight back. I stumble. Words escape me. What the f- He quickly withdrew his hands from my shoulders, sneering at my reluctancy. Of course. Figures. He lets go of my shoulders, wandering off to the kitchen. I couldn't comprehend what just happened. There was something very wrong with him, undoubtedly more than what the surface provided. I just stood, frozen in place, my stomach churned as I struggled to make sense of things. I hadn't even registered that he had returned. Things were getting so good. I can't deny you almost made my night. However, all things get a end eventually. Shame that fighting spirit of yours didn't last throughout the night. Ah, God damn it! A thick blade slices through the skin of my neck. Blood trickles down my throat, pulling over my chest. 
You did so well. The man polishes the blade with a handkerchief, carefully wiping away the remnants of my blood. I can really say how proud I am of you for showing me your bravest face. He scoops me into his arms, holding me like I were the most precious thing in the world. Despite it all, you gave it your best shot. It means something. I'm gonna really cherish the time we had together, Squirt. My breathing grows ragged as he held me. The last sensation I felt were his hands slinking through my bloodied hair. And I died again. Ah, frick. I'm going to beg for my life. Why not? Knowing the risk of consuming the latest liquid filled my senses with overwhelming dread. My knees trembled below me, nearly buckling from the pressure. My eyes found his. My lips quivered. Please, don't make me do this. A soft sob falls from my lips. The man let out an annoyed groan. Ugh, stop. Don't do that messy crap. His oversized thumb finds my face to wipe away my beating tears. After a moment, he pulls away with a soft grunt. He ruffles his hair in an irritated manner. I really hate it when people whine. Ah, God damn it again! He plunges a knife deep into my chest. Whining isn't really a good look for you, Squirt. With a swift twist, he pulls the blade from my sternum. Can't stand this. He continued to mumble under his breath. My body buckled, collapsing into the ground. Too bad you weren't very different from the others. I really had hopes for you. He notched my frame a couple of times with his boot. It was still the last thing I registered before slipping into a permanent stillness. And I died. Well, I guess that just goes to show the best way to survive for murderers is not to interact. Like, murderers do not interact unless it's with me, of course. I mean, heck, I would absolutely love to get to know you. All right. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. That was No More Time. Uh, if you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. Um, this was made for this year's Murder Boy Jam. Uh, and of course, I also joined this jam a while back. My game has already been released. So hey, I hope you guys uh, would enjoy that too. Link to that is also in the description below. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.